Hello there. I have some neutral heart decor for the Valentine's this year and can't wait to share it. I'm Whitney Lucas with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and let's jump into our craft room. First project's going to be a wreath. So we're going to start with a Dollar Tree heart wreath form and uh, I mean you can get these anywhere but Dollar Tree always seems to have them even year round. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make a center for it. So you're going to grab any kind of cardboard or whatever you want to use to cut out. I'm going to thank the United States Postal Service for this cardboard box that was either shipped to me or I shipped something or I just had it. I'm not sure. But in any event, we have a piece of cardboard. Trace out the second, around the second rung because we want it to be bigger than the center. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with batting. I got two kinds of batting. I have this see-through-y kind. That's a technical term, see-through-y. <laughs> uh, it's a, just two different kinds of batting I've had for making different projects. And then this one here I know for sure is a cotton batting, but it's a bit thicker. You can see it's more dense. And I'm just going to basically add the batting to the heart cardboard that we cut out because I'm going to make this like, I'm not going to say tufted because I'm not actually putting any tufts or quilting in it, but I want it to look like it's padded. So it's going to look like it's a cute little pillow sort of center, but You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to add two, two layers of this stuff because I have a lot of it. And then I'm going to put one layer of the other. Now put a little bit too much glue right there. You saw there. So be careful. If you choose to do the same as me, you may burn a paw. So just be careful. Um, and then of course, just cut out around the edges, just trace it out. And then I add a little piece here just to cover up that little divot. Cause I didn't know if it was going to make a hole or not when we put, uh, we're going to put some fabric over it. So I'm going to do the top half on this first piece here. And it's just to cover it to make sure. And then again, trace out the top of the heart. And I had the perfect amount left over that I could just do the bottom of the heart with that extra piece here. So not any, uh, any waste or anything like that, which it's not like I don't have a ton of everything already cut. So this is what we got after we've put what, three layers of batting on there. Now we're going to use some uh, Crafters Square craft fabric. Now I love this ticking stripe fabric. It's, I bought a, a, a decent amount of them, but that's what it looks like. We're gonna chuck that off to the side and <laughs> we're gonna use a piece that I have left over from another project and it fits perfectly. Now the heart itself, if you if you have a pattern, I want you to take, pay attention to the pattern here. I'm gonna cut my heart a diagonal because I'm trying to get as much surface space as available and I didn't even realize basically these stripes aren't going to go vertical on the heart. It ends up looking so cute the way it does though. So it was one of those happy accidents. Now you see me cutting two. Now the first one that you saw me trace out, I traced it about an inch around the outside of the cardboard. And the second one I did right on the cardboard because we're going to use that for a backing. Now the one that you're going to trace larger than your piece here, this is going to be covering your front. So for the top of the heart, I'm going to put a little cut right here, just where the two the two pieces come together and that's just going to help with wrapping um, and then from this point we are just going to put glue and we're going to pull please come closer i'll show you we're going to glue and then we're going to just push them down in like little pleats natural little pleats please be careful with hot glue do as i say not as i do <laughs> because there's so many times here i'm watching i'm like whitney you're sticking your fingers next to the molten hot lava well smart cute huh yeah real cute there i have a little i have a little uh, silicone spatula there that i eventually use but i don't believe i burnt myself on this particular one but you know it all meshes together at some point you're like i did i burn myself or was that yesterday or the day before who knows i don't remember it wasn't particularly bad i didn't have to go to the emergency room so yeah <laughs> just another day in the craft room right now see how the the stripes go diagonally turned out so great now that second piece that we cut the same size as our cardboard, we're just going to layer on top. Now this was a step that I didn't necessarily need to do. Um, you don't see that much of it on the back, but I mean, this also gives you the option that you can use this for any other type of thing. You can actually use this as an actual, uh, you know, hanging wall hanging. You don't have to cover the back, but I like to just in case. And I'll also, you never know when plans change. So in any event, the back of it was covered and it made me happy. Now, I want to add some ruffles. So I'm taking some wired ribbon. This is a big spool of ribbon I got at Costco years ago. It's a 50 yard roll, but just pick some complementing colors. Now I'm going to leave the wire on one side and I'm going to pull on one wire on this, this uh, wired ribbon. If you see you pull the wire and you're pulling the ribbon back, you're creating a, a precious little ruffle. So you can also buy trim in the fabric departments and different things like that, that have already, you know, they already have ruffles in them. But this is basically, in my opinion, the most inexpensive way if you have a hoarder's paradise of ribbons such as myself. So 
again, I've just picked a nice burlapy brown color and I'm going to gather enough of that ribbon around to where I can just guesstimate that it's gonna it's gonna go around the entire heart and I'm going to attach it to the back of our padded piece here. Now I'm folding over an edge because I'm making a seam so this is the part that we're going to you know because I want the front to look a little a little finished so we're gonna make sure that we covered this piece and also the other end where the where the wire is we don't want that to come out in case you tug on it a little bit too hard, such as I have many times, just tug it on it, make sure I want my ruffles to stay ruffly. And I just found a random place on the heart and I just glued it down. So I'm gluing the gathered edge of the ribbon to the edge of our padded heart on the back. So you'll get the effect, and I'll show you in a second. See this little effect? You get this little ruffle effect towards the back. It's so cute, so cute, I love it. And uh, we're gonna do another row too, but we're gonna put this one on the actual uh, wreath frame. And I'll show you that in a second once we finish this. So just continue securing that ruffled edge, the pulled, the wired pulled edge close to the edge of the back of the heart. And then when you get to your second piece here, same thing, cut it off and then just fold it over a little bit and give itself like a little hem, just a nice little folded over piece. Just wait, you can kind of see the transition, but it's just, we're trying to hide it. Now, this, <laughs> This went a few different ways, okay? I started out here. Now you'll notice this does not match our pictures in the thumbnails and anything like that because this did not start. I wanted to show you exactly what I went through. This particular one, I started with this satin ribbon that I have a lot of and I just wrapped the frame, which is what we do mostly with Dollar Tree frames. I mean, there's not much you can do with these frames other than wrap them or just, you know, fill them with burlaps, different, different types of colored ribbons. So I wrapped the entire frame only had a small little difficulty around the, the little the, the end there and this looks great right well this is our that's just our base so now i had the bright wonderful idea that i'm going to take this jute twine this is all sped up because again it doesn't matter it took me forever and i was like this might have been a little bit more tedious than i wanted to do whitney what are you thinking so with lots of time i continued to wrap this i came across difficulties i, per I persevered i continued it just was getting to me and I was like, Whitney, you may not want to continue this. Just stick with me. I want to show you the, the process. This was how it Two went. 2,000 years later. <laughs> so yeah, I get here and I've cut out a lot, you guys, but trust me, this particular part was giving me so much problems and it was bundling itself up so much. Yeah, um, this was probably my 20th attempt so we're not gonna yeah that's yeah so we have a wreath frame again as you can see here this is our wreath frame ta-da look how pretty it is so we're starting over look at this wonderful thick two and a half inch rib uh ribbon wow it is a wonderful gray and white checkered buffalo farmhouse happiness whatever you want to say for it and we're just going to wrap this frame such as we did with the original uh brown satin ribbon except for this one went so much easier went so much it's also a thicker ribbon so depending on your patience and <laughs> your your supplies you know just keep in mind sometimes you, you might have an idea start out a certain way and it ends another which i i'm really glad it did because i think this color works great with what we were going for the twine would have looked good too but it just maybe on a smaller scale or with a different type of wreath frame but not like this so now that we've covered that in the gray and white ribbon, now I want to take a complementing ribbon. Now I got two polka dots. I don't know which one I want. Initially I go here. Now would you have went with the smaller polka dots or you would go with the polka dots I picked? I like these larger polka dots. I had three different options there, but I think the black was a little bit too harsh. It was a solid black burlap, faux burlap ribbon, but I really like these larger polka dots. Now these larger polka dot ribbon is also, it's a Halloween roll. I think I got, I want to say at Joann's. But it's, or Michael's maybe, it's a hollow, they got this during Halloween, couple, I don't know how many years ago, but in any event, I don't let the marketing or the season dictate, you know, when or what or how I buy ribbon. If I like it and I think it's pretty, I'm going to continue to do it. So we're going to continue with the same format that we did for the first little ruffle. We're going to take one side of the double side, not double sided, of the, of the wired ribbon. We're going to pull on one wire and create this cute little ruffle. And now for this one, We've already secured down the heart to the middle of the um, the wreath frame there. Sorry, I was jibber jabbering through that. So now we're gonna take this edge on this ruffled edge here on the pulled wired edge, and we're going to glue that 
to the actual wreath frame that's been wrapped in the gray and white ribbon. We're gonna glue it to that frame, but in between the padded heart ruffle and the frame. So you'll see here as I pull in a little bit closer, aren't you glad you used dial kind of closeness? And we're gonna just put our line of glue between the two and then with our fingers at first and then realize that that's not a good idea. We're gonna get probably some sort of tool and you're going to just tuck in that little ruffled edge right into the seam, right into the glue you're placing in there. And it's so cute. I love these little ruffles. Little ruffles make me so happy. And again, I picked normal colors. I didn't really want to do pinks and reds and all that. And I don't decorate personally for Valentine's Day, but hearts are kind of cute. And I think, well, wait till you see the last DIY. The last DIY in this, uh, in this video, it, it became my surprise and my happiness. And I don't know about still decorating my whole house for Valentine's Day, but that was a happy accident that turned into a, hmm, I might start putting hearts up in my house. <laughs> Or I might just try to take the exact same uh, premise and, and, and project and apply it to a different shape or style or, or wreath, some other type of wall hanging, but it turns out so beautiful. This one is cute too. It just, these are just wall hangings or wreath alternatives that you can get done pretty quickly and effectively. And then you have something cute and fast just for uh, the little mini holiday. I'd say Valentine's is a mini holiday. It's not that big in my personal holiday opinion. You know me, I prefer pumpkins year round. <laughs> <laughs> so just again, tuck your ribbon between these two layers here and you start to see it. I, I mean, I'm really glad I picked this larger polka dot. It's so cute. It's so cute. And I actually, when I got to the end here, it was really easy to start it on, on the, the bottom point of the, of this, um, this heart, it tucked in perfectly and you can't even really see the seam and look how cute this is. Now I have just enough left over that I cut out that I'm actually going to use this to make a hanger. If you choose to hang it, you actually have a matching polka dot hanger that is more than, you know, I'm not trying to hide this one, as you can tell. If you choose not to use it, then hey, no harm, no foul. You can actually just tuck it behind the heart if you have it setting up against something like a shelf setter or, or you know, on uh, something here. Now, I chose to try to cover that also with an extra piece of the gray and white ribbon. You know, I like to try to cover and hide things and get them already. Now, personally, I probably would have taken another piece of felt and covered the entire back of this, but I did not have any large enough to do that. But again, for what it is, all the, the pretty nasty behind the scenes, I think I got covered well. Now, I have this empty space here, but look how cute she is. You could, you could be done, but of course I'm not gonna. So I'm gonna take this very thin ribbon. I'm not even sure what that is, like three eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to take and bundle maybe three or four loops in my hands and we're going to make a very loose bow. Now I'm not wrapping it and I'm not tying it in a knot, but I am just going to try to secure it right here in the middle, just on the top right corner, just enough. So we're going to put, as I show you again, come closer. I'm going to get a, some buttons too out of my button stash, but I'm going to apply just a little dot of glue onto the fabric here. And we're going to stick all of these little, the, the center of these ribbons, just to make sure they all get a piece of glue on them. And that's technically glued down. So I got a flat, I have a flat middle and that's supposed to create a good surface for my bow or for my button. Now the button I glued down here, it's a little bit too small. So change my mind. And I found an, a nicer, larger, like natural colored button. It's like a little wood button. Not yet. Yep, there she is. She's so cute. And of course, then I'm gonna I'm gonna layer that cute little black button in the middle of it. We're gonna stay with the theme. It's so cute. And I think it's just perfect enough to get the point across. Perfect enough to show that little bit of country, a little bit of farmhouse, just a little bit of happiness. She's so cute. Uh, what else? What do you What do you add? Like, I, I my go to is buttons or like safety pins, different pieces of fabrics. What are your go-tos? And also of greenery too, but and there's no greenery in, in this one. So there, I couldn't go to my, you know, my normal of, let me just put a couple little leaves and flowers around it, but that's it. I think it's cute. The buttons were a good last little addition. I didn't want to leave it plain in the middle. It just, it needed something. And I just had no other, no other idea. You could quilt that. You could tuft it, add little, little buttons and stuff to it and tuft that heart before you glue it down. That would also be very cute. I'm not a quilter. I'm not sure even how to do that. <laughs> also, you'd probably have to add a little bit more batting if you want to get it a tufted look. Let's see how pretty it is. She's so cute. So here's a picture of it hanging. 
And then, of course, another one of it leaning up against a wall. Oh, and, of course, I didn't tuck anything behind it. <laughs> so tell me what you think. All right, now we're moving on to our second wall hanging here. Now we've got two heart cutouts or two heart pieces. One's a sign and one's a wood cutout from Dollar Tree. And we're going to layer them. I felt that, um, you know, they're not exactly 100% the right shape, but they're pretty close. And I think they're really cute. So the sign itself, I'm getting it just prepped here ready. And I'm taking this, you know, metal sign off the front of it. We're going to sand down some of the top parts here that came up that are a little raised. And we're going to take this wallpaper here. This wallpaper cut out also from Dollar Tree. I love this this uh, pattern here. Now, towards the end, it ends up, we end up covering up a lot of it. But, you know, you get the gist because it is it does still show. Now, it's almost the perfect size. It almost covers the entire bit of the heart, except for just a tiny little sliver on the side. And I was able to match it up so close that I was pretty proud of myself for that. <laughs> I was like, you can't even see the transition. It's so awesome. So I just added another little piece here. And now it's all, you know, the adhesive that comes on it. It's a great adhesive. It's already stuck down on top of that sign. And I'm going to use, I have this as a finger sander. It's a zip sander. Then I move here to a finger, a fingernail file because it had a tougher grit. It had a, a higher grit on it. And you just kind of rub across those edges to get a really good clean edge. And then here I'm taking just a poking tool of some sort which means find something skinny and sharp and stick it through the holes because we're going to put the hanger back on this heart. I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm just going to take that hanger. Now, that's one thing I love about these Dollar Tree hangers. It has like a little shoelace ending, little plastic piece on it. And when you pull it through, it kind of gets, um, it goes sideways and it holds it perfectly. I love their hangers. So now with the back piece done, I'm going to do something new. I got this new product I found this at a, a craft store. I don't remember which one so many years ago, but I do have some of this listed in my Amazon shop. Should you want to try it out? This is called a weathered wood accelerator and it just adds an age look in, in minutes. This is a gray, it's a gray wood. You have to put it on bare or unfinished wood. And I don't know that it turned as gray as it looks in the picture, but then again, it says it's shown on pine and red oak. And I have no clue what type of wood is what wood just by looking at it. I mean, if you're really good at that and that's your jam, then I'm, I'm happy for you. You can tell what kind of wood is wood. I just know wood is wood. It's not like I can sit down and smell it and tell you that the, this is a Douglas fir. I mean, I'm just going off of what I know from like when I used to buy Christmas trees that were real. <laughs> I have no clue what wood is wood, but this particular wood cutout looked very, very pretty when we're done. Now you see here, I'm applying it like I would any kind of like the Waverly, you know, like wax or stains. And it's just an accelerator. It has no smell. It goes on like, it's just like, it's literally like almost like a coffee stain. Like it's just watered down something. I, I don't know, but it, I did, I did three coats. Here's the second coat. It's getting darker and it's, while it's wet, it looks very brown. Very easy to apply. You know, I let it sit a little bit longer and soak into the wood. And then after it's all dry, this is three coats. It is a very pretty color. I have to say, I'm very happy with it again. And instead of the back, there's your original. So it is a very effective color and a stain. And it does give you that weathered barn look. And I really, really love it. I absolutely love it. And we're going to put some white wax on it. We're going to do some other stuff. But first, we're going to put on some rub-on transfers called Maze Roses from Iron Orchids Designs. I get all my IOD and my DIY products from Lori at MiltonStouter.com. So if you want, take a look in, in the description. You can see there's a coupon code that'll see what'll work. Some things apply, some things don't. But it's a great place to get a lot of good supplies. Now, I got this transfer last year sometime when they first came out. But look how pretty these roses are. And they're like the perfect color for our neutral Valentine's theme. So I'm just taking these chunks. Now, this transfer is intended to be like maybe on one huge piece of furniture, like a larger piece of like a larger piece of furniture, a dresser, armoire, something like that. I never leave anything in the way anybody any of these any of these manufacturers intend things i don't i rip them apart i take them i piece them out i am not a large furniture flipper or anything like that i would do what they call smalls so everything that i get i will cut into many pieces so don't let that also intimidate you as far as like oh this is intended for a larger piece that does not matter we have scissors and we will cut them into the pieces we choose and it will work for us and it's wonderful <laughs> so here's one froze and again, these IOD transfers are very good quality, very good quality. And they're so gorgeous. So I had a little bit of an overhang and I just took my finger sander and I got the rest of that off the edge. I didn't want to fold it over and put it on the back because it's just not necessary. 
And then I got some of it on my finger. I had to sand it off my finger. This stuff's got a good adhesive on it. And so far, there's just their first rose. I think the, pick, the, the, the contrast in that color, man. So if you like what you see and you haven't done so already, please consider liking, subscribing, hit the bell. You'll be notified that every time I upload a video, it's the cheapest and easiest way to support me and let YouTube know that you like what you see and actually tells YouTube to suggest me to more people. So it helps, helps out my channel. Now I'm going to take another piece here. I just wanted to not leave some empty space. And then I took some of the roses uh, leaves and just put that in the top right corner. And then I have this little piece left over. That's a stem from the end of the, of those leaves. And it had a tiny little piece here that kind of was a little bare between that leaf and the rose. And I stuck that in there just because I really didn't want to waste it. Again, the hoarder's paradise of, I don't know, you name it <laughs> when it comes to craft surprise, right? So I stuck that in there and it made it look like it was it, like one cohesive piece, like that little stem right there made it look like the leaf was connected to the flower. So it was little, look what I saved a tiny little one inch piece of garbage made it <laughs> and I made it pretty. <laughs> <laughs> now look how pretty and effective this is. You could literally just attach this to the sign and be done. Add maybe a bow to cover up that hole, which is what we're going to eventually do. But you know me, guys. I'm extra. So we're going to make this a layered, a layered uh, sign. We're going to add a little fluffy pretty goodness behind it between the two. So I'm taking some tumbling tower blocks, or you kind of call them Jenga pieces from Dollar Tree. And I'm leaving them as they are, and I'm using them to prop up the sign so we have that maybe, what, half inch, quarter inch, little bit of uh, space between the two uh, pieces of wood. So I'm going to fill this space with Spanish moss at first, and I'm just securing it with hot glue just around the edges when I know, you know, in the shape of the heart itself, because we know that's what's going to show when we put our smaller heart on top. And I'm just gluing and I, I mean, I burnt my fingers. I don't know if you'll actually be able to tell if you want to slow this down somehow. I burnt my fingers a decent amount, even though I'm using a little silicone thing. It's just one of those things where you're like, I'm going to taste, test it out. I'm going to stick my finger in here. Like, nope. Yep. And I recorded it. <laughs> I'm nothing if not, you know, open to share my injuries and mistakes. That's what makes it fun. What I forgot to do was I forgot to seal this before I secured it. So I did secure it down, but we're going to take some Debbie's uh, DIY clear wax and we're going to seal it. Now we want to seal the transfer itself. Um, and that was clear wax. This one is the white wax. And I'm going to add this to the, this. I think it made the, the wood uh, tint or that wood color, just that weathered wood color so much more pretty. Now I wasn't happy with no greenery. So I went and grabbed a little bundle of, I think this is eucalyptus that I got off of Amazon. You can take a look at my Amazon shop. It's in my link. It's a, there's a link in the description in the first pinned comment below. If you want to take a look, these are in there. I've got a big bundle of them. I mean, a good, decent amount of them for fairly cheap, but I wanted to take these and nestle them in between. Now the full piece that you pull off of the bush itself was a little bit too big. So I cut the base off by two, two layers. So you're going to see me take multiple pieces here and just layer them all together. Just going to continue to kind of put a little bit of glue on the end and just nestle them into the Spanish moss. And then a lot of times I'm making sure I have just enough contact with the back sign that that's covered with the wood wallpaper. That way I have something a little bit more solid to attach it to. That way you make sure your little pieces won't fall out. Now you're going to have shedding with the Spanish moss. That's what it is. It is what it is. Spanish moss is very messy, but it's also very effective. I used to dislike it so much that I would never have it. And now I think I use it pretty much almost in every project. There are very few DIYs that I don't add Spanish moss to. I don't, it's just become one of my favorites. Now I'm going to add a bundled bow to the top of this, right where there's a hole in the middle of that top heart. So I'm just trying to show you, I'm wrapping this around in order to make a tail. I have a decent amount started here, hanging off the bottom of my hand. So I hold that with my thumb. And then I just take the rest of the twine and I'm wrapping it around all four of my fingers. And then you leave the other piece there and you've got uh, basically the tails are already established and then you can just pull that off your fingers and keep holding it in the middle and you get a cute little gathered bow. Now you may see in a lot of my videos, you're going to see me drop them, take them apart, restart over. It's very normal for me to, to wrap a bow maybe 16 times. <laughs> maybe that's a little exaggeration, but hey, what is it? It's not fun unless, unless you're making something up, right? 
but maybe two or three times. It, it never fails. So I grabbed another piece of twine and I'm going to lay that flat. I'm putting my bundle in the middle and then this is where we're going to tie a knot around the center. This is where we're going to cinch the center in and it makes us our cute little bundled bow. The center piece itself is for me where if you're wrapping it around itself, we're going to take this extra piece and wrap it around to create a thicker middle uh, center to the bow. This is the part for me that makes the bow absolutely adorable. I can't help it. It's just, it's so cute that it's ineffective that I end up, sometimes I go a little bit overboard. It's like, Whitney, that's just a little bit too much jute in the middle of that bow there. It's bigger than the bow. Calm down. <laughs> Unwrap it and calm down. <laughs> but in any event, Wrap it as many times as it makes you happy. Everybody has a different preference. If you want your bows thick and fluffy, go for it. Wrap it. If you want them a little bit more simple, then maybe just tie it in a knot, maybe like the way you do your shoelaces, and then continue from there, because you don't necessarily have to bundle a bow every time. I just prefer this. I like the way it looks, so I pretty much do a lot of the same things. It's a, it's a lot of repetitive thing. A lot of repetitive things happen in the craft room. You just figure the only thing that's really changing isn't your technique, it's your theme, your colors, and your holidays. You know, well, I guess holiday would apply to theme. So whatever the project is, you're gonna find yourself using a lot of the same techniques. So this bundled bow here, look at, I love having four tails. For some reason, the more tails, the better. Make me so happy. And then I'm just gonna glue that to over the little, um, hole there on that top piece. Now the larger pieces of the eucalyptus that I cut off, I ended up pulling the leaves off of it and tucking it around the bow here because I can't leave a bow alone. But you will see coming soon on the last project here, I did not add anything to the bow. You'll be very proud of me. No, I wanted to badly. My eye was twitching and all kinds of stuff, but I didn't. I refrained. <laughs> now I'm showing you another little bundle here. I pulled this off of a boxwood pick from Walmart and I wanted to just add a, a different texture, a different type of leaf or greenery, piece of greenery to the project. So from this little piece that I pulled off of the bundle, I'm now pulling these little tiny, I'm going to call them branches of the boxwood off. I tucked that around the bow and then I just started to randomly place some of these inside the, around the edge of the wreath like we did with the eucalyptus. I'm putting enough glue on it to melt it from its original state because that's what the glue gun does is it melts anything completely obliter obliterate it but you know as long as you get it secured down before it completely disappears you're good to go and i've tested all these pieces nothing's coming out none of the greeners falling out it's all secured in there and i love how she looks i love how she turned out you tell me what you think would you change anything else do you have any other ideas for a bow um, i know i do a lot of bundled bows around my fingers but it's effective it's a small little effective way to make a precious little bow that kind of is like you know the top, the cherry on top. I love how she turned out. All right, guys, our last one for this video. I finally found the Jumbo Craft Hearts. I'd seen these a couple years and every time I went, my Dollar Trees never had them. So this year I went from as far as this recording is concerned, today is January 11th. I went last week and they had of one box. I grabbed four of them because I'm greedy <laughs> and I have plans for one of them for 4th of July. So stay tuned. If you're sticking with me and you still here, put like a flag in the, put a, an American flag or something or whatever your flag is, put a flag down in the, uh, in the comments, but I will be using one of these, not in this form, as you should see this mess I'm making, <laughs> not like this, but we're cutting this one in half for this project, but I do have plans to use one of these hearts, uh, for 4th of July. Now, we've cleaned up and, you know, sat down, talked to ourselves, and, you know, tucked ourselves off the edge of that absolute horrible styrofoam mess. And we have two pieces. Now, I want to create a sign to put them on. So we're going to use these 21 inch, it says ruler sticks, but these are like the five gallon bucket paint stir sticks you can get. I got these at Home Depot or Lowe's or yeah, one of the hardware stores. I believe you can get them at Walmart too. Now, three of them wasn't wide enough. You get them in packs of three for a dollar a dollar something. I ended up using five here. So five wide, as you can see, when I put the two star foam hearts, the halves on there worked out perfectly. Now this right here is just some paint sticks. I got them off of Amazon. It's literally just a bundle of a hundred sticks. It says that they're paint sticks. They're not exactly even. They're not exactly, they're kind of little like concave shape, but these were leftovers I had from a project that I cut apart. Last year, I made a little planter with it with these lining the outside of it, like a picket fence sort of thing. So I'm going to use these as our supports to hold our little 
sign here, our little paint stick sign together. So I'm just going to run them across the back. I'm using wood glue and hot glue at first, and that's just to secure them down. I'm not putting enough hot glue on there to really hold anything together. It's just to hold the paint stick down itself, because after we do this, we're going to take a staple gun and we're going to get staple happy. And we're going to put about 20 staples on each one of those. And we're going to take a look at the world's cutest little hammer. And we're going to tap in all of these staples to make sure that they're in both pieces of wood. Now we're going to stain this beautiful girl. I list my favorite stain here. It's a folk art home decor wood tint in the color walnut. It is my absolute favorite. You will see me use this continually in the future. And if you watch any of my old videos, you will see me use it periodically since I discovered it last year. She is a beautiful color and I love it. And also guys, after this, I used um, my Debbie's, white, Debbie's DIY white wax on it. And it turned a beautiful farmhouse aged like gray. The way the walnut reacted with the white wax was, oh, it was so gorgeous. I can't wait for you to see it. It's almost like I didn't want to do anything to it. I just wanted to hang up five sticks. Look, okay, this is pretty. This is what it looked like. And then when I put the white wax on it, I'm just going to hang some sticks on the wall. Why? Because it's a pretty color. I didn't want to have anything to it. You'll just see. It's so pretty. Even like this, it's gorgeous. Now, look at this bundle of happiness. This is just recently also purchased Dollar Tree Daisies. Every once in a while, I get lucky at the stores near me and I catch them right when they put things out. And these are so absolutely cute. And the colors, again, non-traditional for, for spring or, or Valentine's Day, but I couldn't help myself. So I tried to grab six of each and I think I got five of one color and then six of all the other colors is four different colors and you don't use all of them I just went overboard because I didn't know how many it would take now for starters we're going to cover the styrofoam hearts in these as you can tell I and these little piles are two stems each so two bundles each and I'm just going to start applying them now my idea here is I was seeing I was just going to go kind of randomly and then I decided to put them in in layers now, it's not necessarily a gradient color because they're not the same color. It's not monochrome by any means. But the way that these turned out, I love the colors together. I love this theme. Whatever Dollar Tree's doing, if they keep doing it, you're going to see me buy more florals from them because I'm not usually a fan of Dollar Tree florals, but they're so cute. Also, if you layer them in with some more expensive, more more um, quality uh, florals, you might get some of them like at Hobby Lobby. They're very good filler and you don't see some of the imperfections. Now I'm going to just, I measured it out here so I could get four rows to find if I could see, maybe give myself a guide as to keep it even because I will go crazy and just kind of literally go a little bit overboard and just start gluing things in. And then it's like, it's kind of like the reason why I'm not allowed to touch my own eyebrows. Like my um, esthetician is I, I get my eyebrows waxed. I'm going to share this might be TMI for some of you might not be, but I have to have them. But if I do it myself, if I go, I get pluck happy and then we're, we're ending at Mona Lisa. So I'm not allowed to touch my own eyebrows. Also not allowed to just sit back and start hot gluing colors in, because if I want a pattern, I'm going to have to tell myself, Whitney, you're having too much fun. Stop and make sure you're looking at the pattern you want to create. <laughs> now, if this is something you can do with any other type of flower or greenery, think of the same color palette and then go from lighter to darker. That's what I was going with here, but because these are just different, you've got blue and then two types of like an orangey peach and then a lighter yellow color. It still worked out maybe if you want to try to consider it being like the blue is the darkest part of the color and then the, the cream yellowy is the top is the lightest. It's just so effective and this particular line of flowers, I can't say more about it, was so pretty. And I didn't use that many. I did not use that many. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but I do remember writing a note. So I'll see it in a second once we're done with this. I know I used more of these yellow ones than I did anything else, especially for this first side of the heart, because this was my first one I did. I didn't necessarily realize I don't have to stick them very close to each other. I could space them out more so you can see the middles. Like the blue, you can't see the middles on the blue at all. It just looks like a bunch of fluffy little petals. But then if you go up towards the top of the heart, you can actually see those brown centers to the daisy. That's when I started spreading them out. You don't have to group them so closely together. But look how pretty that is. So now we've got two. And then this also lets you know that you, even if they're cut apart, I had enough to cover an entire heart so you don't have to cut it in half. Um, now here I'm counting them out and we're going to see in a second. I, I did this on purpose because I knew I would remember. 14. I used 14 stems. I think I bought 30 or 32 and I used 14 stems. So that's not that bad for Dollar Tree in order to cover these hearts in the way I did. 
So remember, if you leave it whole, you still need 14 stems to cover front and back. You'll be good to go. What I should have done also now, this next step, I should have done this before I covered the heart, so then I wouldn't have to open up another one. But because I wasn't able to take the actual cut apart styrofoam, I'm going to create a pattern per se, so I can cut out um, some felt backing to cover the backs of the styrofoam. Now, I know that these parts are only going to stick out on the sides of our picture frame so minimally that it doesn't matter but I still have this thing where I need to make sure things are a little bit finished and they look a little bit nicer than the average, you know, no one wants to see the behind the scenes. Now I have these circles of felt cut out because I was thinking a few years ago that I was gonna be just like the wreath seller of the world. <laughs> that did not happen, but we have a lot of felt. So I'm going to take, as you see, I made a paper pattern and then I cut out the two, two hearts and we're gonna cover these. So I'm using a combination of, this is the Dollar Tree, uh, wood super glue. Again, we don't have wood. I'm just using the Dollar Tree super glue part of it. And then I'm also using hot glue to get these to stick down to themselves. It's not a perfect 100% absolute coverage, but it's enough to make me happy and enough to get the point across that this is a finished item. So I cover up enough of it here and pretty much you're done. Now you could use these as hangings. You could use these as uh, shelf sitters, leaning them up against a wall, filler, anything like that. You don't have to put them on a frame by now, but look, here's our step I was talking about earlier. When you put this white wax on here, this is the Debbie's DIY white wax. Again, I get everything and all of these uh, IOD and DIY products from miltonsdaughter.com. Now, this white wax. First off, the white wax itself is so awesome. It's it's very soft and creamy. It's like butter and I, I love it. I started adding it to our little boards here, but in different chunks and pieces because I still wanted some of that brown walnut to show through. Then I decided to just really load up areas and start wiping it. This is a dry paper towel. There's no wet, I'm not using a wet anything, no wet cloth of anything, it's dry paper towel. And I started adding a little bit more around where the handles are and just around the tips and the edges. I put the, the, the hearts on there at one point just so I could see kind of the middle, but look how pretty this is, the color that that white wax turned that walnut stain. It's just gorgeous, so gorgeous. I couldn't help it. Now, I needed to make a hanger for this. So this kind of turned into a little bit of a, yeah, in hindsight thing. So I started gluing this down and then I realized quickly, I should have put the hanger itself down first and then wrapped these edges around that. I did it backwards. So I'm wrapping these edges and I'm making these little decorative pieces that are supposed to secure our hanger, but I didn't put the hanger in them. <laughs> so do as, again, do as I say, not as I do, learn from my mistakes. I wrapped both of these around the edge and then I realized, oh, well, we need to cut a longer piece. I'm gonna double it up and I need this to be, I gotta stick it through where we just wrapped. So I'm getting a stem or a dowel or some sort of apparatus and I'm just taking it and I'm feeding the ends of both of those through the pieces that we wrapped around the top. Again, if you understand what I'm trying to get to, put your hanger down first. So I would just like tack it down in the middle with some hot glue first and avoid some of those problems. Now, what I did was I ended up cutting the loops and then turning, uh, you know, tying a couple knots. And then I was worried that they still might come out even though I put a little bit of hot glue underneath the knot itself. I went and grabbed that wonderful little staple gun and we just threw a couple staples in the back of both of those. So we're pretty secure. There's the two staples and then all the rest of that stuff's hot glued together. So we're pretty secure. It's got a good hanger and it's not a heavy piece anyways. No, still not ready to, to add the, the hearts yet. Our uh, main event, the pretty girls. I'm gonna add a bow to the middle of it. Now, at first I wanted to wrap the entire thing, those three handle pieces in the middle, but it looked a little weird. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna make a heart, or not a heart, I'm gonna make a, a, a bundled bow wide enough. So this is a little bit wider than my four fingers, but it's the same exact premise as a, a you know a hand wrapped bow. So in this instance, I was going to do that and then I realized, you know what, Let, let's just make it an even little design. And I wrapped more jute around the center handle so we had something else here. And now this one is again, you think I would learn from the first time I missed it up, Put the twine down first, then wrap it, Whitney. Come on. <laughs> so that didn't really work out, but this was a little bit too small. So what I did was 
I took the longer part here of the uh, cardboard and I made a very wide bow. Then I just placed it in the middle and I used that piece of twine that we stuck down the middle and I tied a knot around it. I cut another piece of twine and wrapped it around the outside of that knot and knotted it again and I left it very long. I love that long tail, but as you see here, we are securing our hearts down. The tail was a little bit too long for the design that we're putting on here with these hearts. So I kind of put the hearts at a little different, you know, they, they one diagonal left, one diagonal right, made me happy. And then here I'm, I mess with the tails on this bow for a good, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It's tried to cut out a lot of the useless bow fluffing. <laughs> but I ended up cutting them a little bit. See, here's minimally. Minimally how much felt is actually showing, but that's how much styrofoam would have shown if I had not covered it, and that would have bothered me personally. So personally, my choice, I covered the whole thing with felt. Also, it's a better adhesive to have the felt to the wood from the styrofoam and all that. It gives you more layers, but would you have left the tails long? I cut one or two of them off. I, would, I really don't know if it was if it was necessary because I really liked the way it looked with the longer tails, but they're still there. So tell me what you think. I love how she turned out. I love these colors. This one is easily my favorite of the group. And I, I love it all. That's it for today. We have three, three projects. It was a little bit of a longer video. So thank you for sticking with me. If you've been here, if you're still here now, I appreciate all of you um, being here, supporting and just being wonderful people. You, you guys are the fuel that keeps me going. You are a wonderful community and I couldn't be more thankful for you. I love how all these, these turned out and Again, neutral colors, if I was to ever decorate for, I was about to say Halloween. <laughs> it's like, guys, pumpkins, man. It's always pumpkins. I, if I was to decorate for Valentine's, this, this one right here would be it. I love it. So I wanted to just say real quick, I'm going to start selling my DIY. So please take a look at my coffee page. I have a link in the description that'll take you right to the coffee page shop and, um, I just, I want to start selling some of these things. I have some clutter and some mess and I need to get rid of things. So take a peek there. If there's any DIYs you've seen, take a peek there. They'll be for sale. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for joining me. I love you more than I could possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.